Hello and welcome to this training on Retina Document Management. Retina's revolutionary new document management module allows you to eliminate paper-based quality management and replace it with an automated digital collaborative solution. It allows you to share documents with um, approvals. It automates your workflows with e-signatures and features document versioning and editing. In the following workshops, I'm going to introduce you to basic navigation in document management. And we'll take a look at administration and configuration. And we'll go through a complete business case that will include offline editing with a document lock, an approval process using the Review Hub, and we'll also convert our document into a requirement, a custom requirement. Finally, we'll take a look at the integration between requirement management and documents by looking at the way to save a document to document management as opposed to simple export and download. We'll take a look at references and associations that provide you with a full end-to-end -end traceability, including the document tracker. So there's a lot to cover. Let's go. All right, so here's our first workshop on basic navigation. Retina features a modern and intuitive user interface that allows you to accomplish your routine tasks related to, related to documents with ease. So we'll take a look at the creation of a new document folder. We'll upload some documents in this folder. Then we'll move documents in the folder structure. We'll take a look at attributes of document trackers and then version and revision control. We'll do sorting and grouping and also take a look at the download. So basic navigation stuff, let's see. I'll log into document management 05. And notice um, we have three types of trackers. Documents have their own tracker type. Now, using this tracker type, you can create several trackers for different kinds of documents, or you can just use one and use the type to sl split your documents. So it works exactly like, like um, requirements or test cases. As you install document management, um, a folder is created automatically. It's called documents. So I'm going to create a new folder. New folder. And I'm just going to call it internal for internal documents. And then hit save. All right, <clears throat> now we can add some files. So I'm gonna <clears throat> navigate into the folder. Next, I'm gonna show you how to upload documents into this folder. The Upload Manager handles gigabyte large files. files. It executes the upload even with an unsafe connection. It enables you to upload multiple files with drag and drop, or you can upload zip files and the system will unzip them while keeping the existing folder structure. It also handles duplicates and you can decide what to do with those duplicates. Create new version, would create a new version of the same file, or you can skip if there's an existing one. So let's see. I'm gonna upload a couple of documents here, selecting a few files, hitting open, and then the upload manager is also going to keep me informed on the, the upload progress. And here we go, the doc document upload has successfully completed. You can see the status created and the documents themselves I'm right up there. Okay, if this was easy, let's create another one, another folder and another upload. So that will be published documents. I'm also going to add a file into this folder. Yep, this is done as well. So I'm going to show you the documents properties or attributes. With um, the show right panel button, I can show the right panel and then change the type. Let's say this is a functional type document, confidentiality level just happens to be external because it's published. After making these changes, I'll quickly jump into the item detail view. Here I am and notice the revision is 0.1. This is the first document that I uploaded, but I made some changes to it. And those will all show in the history 
creating a new version for each change. So when I change the type, it increases the version number. I can always return to previous versions of this document. Let's try something else now. So I'm going to upload the document once more after making a small change to it. Yep, so here is the document. I'm going to open it up. Remove a header and then save it as another document. So back in Retina, I'm going to say more and upload new version. And this time I'm going to select a document with a different name, a different version number. Just hit open and yes. Okay, so let's review the properties. Version 4, so the version number has increased. And going into the details, we can see how the revision has also increased from 0.1 to 0.2. As soon as it hits the approved status, it's going to be 1.0. Let's try moving a document. So I'm going to drag this one and drop it within the published, indicating that I've just uh, published this one. Next, I'm going to use a mass edit to change the properties of these documents. Let's say type equals constraint. and then head over to the table view. You can see all the documents, including, their, including folders. And then clicking on the filter icon, you can insert a group by that can be based on the type. Yep. So constraints, folders, functional, and items that don't belong to any group. Similarly, I could add a filter. So I'm gonna first remove the group by. And then filter, let's say filter for type and constraint. The filtering and grouping functions work exactly like in other trackers within Retina. So in, the, in the previous workshop, we looked at the creation of a new folder. We uploaded some documents and then moved them around in the folder structure. We modified their attributes and looked at the version and revision control. Finally, we looked at the table view and did some sorting and grouping. In the next workshop, we're going to take a look at administration and configuration. The lifecycle of documents is controlled by workflow states and transitions. Strict role-based permission control ensures full legal compliance. So we'll look at project members and roles. We'll look at all the configuration options on document trackers. And we'll see how permissions are governed by the role. And then we'll zoom in on workflow states and state transitions. Firstly, I'm going to head back to admin and members and roles. So we can see how each user in the workspace has an assigned role. This time they are all project admins, but we have a, a predefined set of roles like stakeholder, scrum master and product owner. Next, I'm going to head over to the configuration of my document tracker and then just check out the tabs at the top. So as we saw in the configuration training, permissions drive high-level access by role to the tracker. For example, view if owner, state transitions can be executed in documents driven by roles. If you look at this diagram, you can see how it can go from new to valid to superseded or new to draft, waiting for approval, approved and logged where um, it's checked out for, for the changes. We'll take a look at that in a minute. For every state transition, you have a set of permitted roles that can execute that transition. And this list is fully customizable. I can add or remove roles for every state transition. Another key part of the tracker is the fields section where you can see all the fields, all the attributes, that we want to maintain for our documents. And there's a special one, it's a choice field that I just added uh, for this training that connects the um, 
the document tracker directly to the customer requirement tracker. So in this so short workshop, we review the project members and how you can assign them to roles. We looked at the document tracker configuration, which is like all the other trackers. So I recommend that you also attend the configuration training. And then we looked at permissions by role on the tracker, the various workflow states and state transitions. In the next business case study, we'll take a look at a full cycle where um, you, want, you decide to modify a document offline to so download. Before you do that, you want to put a lock on it to make sure others won't be able to modify it. So we'll check out a document and lock it. Then we'll log in with another user and try to change it. We'll edit the document offline and re-upload it. Then, as it's uploaded, we'll push it through the full approval cycle. So send it for approval in the Review Hub and then complete its approval. Finish review as an approver and set the status to approved. Then we'll review the document and confirm its status. And finally, I'll show you how to send an approved document to the requirement tracker. Let's see. I'll head back to Documents, Published, and my Medical Safety Requirements document. Okay, so this is the one that I'd like to, to modify. First, I'll change its status so it's locked. I'll push it to Draft and then Locked. Okay, then I'm ready to download it for offline edit. I'm going to call it 1.5 and save. Next, I'm going to switch users called Cindy and open up the document management project. So here we go. Here's the logged document. Double click. And let's say I want to change the type. It's non editable. So while Cindy is blocked from ch making changes, Edgar can make an offline change. It's going to keep chopping off parts of the file and save it. File save as. So I'm going to edit, make it 1.6, save, and I'll re upload it to the system. Medical safety requirements, more, upload new version. And this time I'm going to select this 1.6 version. Okay, notice how the version number has increased. And let's just say this is now ready for approval. So while on the tree, I'm going to do a right click and then send selection to review to send my one and only logged document to review. Each review process needs its own name and <clears throat> associated people. The reviewer is going to be my other user, Cindy, and the moderator is <coughs> Edgar. Also, I'm also going to specify that I need a signature from my reviewers. Final review of the data, and then click Next, and it's ready to go. So let's log back as Cindy and check out the Review Hub. Document review, one task pending. So in here, I'm going to click Approve, and then in the signature box, I need to specify my password. Good job. Logging back as Edgar. In the review statistics, I can see how um, it's been approved by Cindy and I am the only one who needs to do some more work with it. So I'm gonna click back and hit finish. Add a comment and set statuses. So for approved items, we want that approved status to be selected. And then items that are rejected, well, we know nothing is rejected, but still we need to specify um, the status for items that require more work. As I finish the review and hit save, now it's fully completed and we can head back to our documents and check out the status of the medical safety requirements document. Notice the revision number has just increased to 1.0 because of the approved status. And lastly, I'm going to show you how this can be sent back to the requirement tracker easily. Send document to requirement. So we use this workspace and the custom requirement specification 
next and next the the window that pops up is exactly like the one we get when we import a word document to the requirement tracker as seen in the requirement management training we can apply um, rules import rules to specify what um, header type goes into which tracker and then as we hit finish the import is going to take place so we went through a full business case where edgar checks out a document for offline edit makes some changes uh, submits it for approval and then cindy the approver will log in complete the approval edgar will log back and send uh, the approved document to a tracker review the revision number that just got changed automatically as well as the the status change in the system in the next demonstration we'll look at the relationship between requirement management and document management in medical device development requirements are transferred into a design history file and follow a document management life cycle till they reach the status approved and signed there are other industries that may benefit from retina's approach to documents in fact anything that you can export from requirements can be added to the document management as a new document and you'll see that in the demonstration so in short we'll review requirements we'll export the requirement into a document tracker and we'll look at ways we can connect documents to requirements um, and that includes adding a reference or an association so here we are i navigated back to customer requirements and there are specific requirements related to error handling these are the ones that i have finished and i want to send across to a document. I'm going to select everything, more, and then export selection to office. The simple word export and just hit export using the default template. But now instead of downloading it, I want to store it in document management. So the workspace is document management 5. My tracker, my one document tracker is called documents. And I know there isn't a file like this, so I can leave it on override. Okay, I can specify the location. Let's say it's internal and finish. So I'm gonna head over to documents, open up the internal, and here is the export document five customer requirement specifications. So that should be renamed. I'm just gonna call it error handling. And here we go, you can see the rename document. So next I'm going to add a reference to a customer requirement. Here we go, customer requirement, search, and I'd like to link it to the one that starts with error. Okay, an association is a lightweight relationship. Association can be added between any two artifacts within Retina. So I'm gonna hit new association, and the association type will be depends on. And then I'm gonna select a specific requirement and hit save. So in this last workshop, we looked at requirements and then exported some requirements into a document tracker directly. And we used two different ways of linking documents to requirements. One was um, through a reference, which requires a setup you basically have to add a choice field to connect the, the two trackers or an association which can be added out of the box. Association also allows you to add a type of connection which could be depends on or subordinate to, etc. So that's it for a quick overview on Retina document management. Thanks for watching. Bye.